That was the trailer from Black Salt Games, Dredge, an upcoming game. It looks so awesome. Tell us who you are and what is going on. All right, cheers, thanks, man. So I'm Mikey, um, I'm from Black Salt Games. We're a small team of four people based over in Christchurch, New Zealand. So we flew all the way here for this little event here, which is pretty insane. It's pretty awesome here. And then, so yeah, Dredge is a cosmic horror fishing RPG, which that's a mouthful. Sounds, it's, it's, like with that, just tag. It's just so. It's just such a cool tagline, anyway. Yeah. So it's been awesome to work on. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. We're gonna jump into the game. Guide me through this. This show sure thing. Madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will do. Will do. It looks very cinematic, very painterly. Yeah. How did you come up with the style? Uh, so um, our, our main 2D artist, creative director sort of guy, he's just like an amazingly talented person. He also does a lot of like the, the shader work and all that sort of stuff to make the whole game look really awesome. He's got like a weird sort of like sharp edge sort of style to his 2D art and yeah. everything like that. It just works perfectly for this sort of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, the layering and everything looks really, really yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the narr uh, the narrative? Like the overview? Okay, so basically what's just happened is you've just um, washed up ashore. Um, you've just been answering a job ad um, to become a fisherman at this new little town here called uh, Great Amaro. And then so right now you're just going to be like introduced to the whole town and the premise of the game by um, a new character called the mayor. So if we just go to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here is our like not shifty looking mayor or whatsoever. At all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so he's gone to his usual, hey man, how's it going? Uh, looks like he bumped into some rocks on the way here. Um, because in the, just in the opening cinematic sort of thing, there's like some fog starts rolling okay. in. And then so one of the ideas of the games is that um, at nighttime, the fog tends to roll in. And oh, then the fog I tends see. to make your kind of, um, your character start going a little bit more insane as things go out. So he's basically gonna tell you to go out, get some fish, but try to get back before nighttime because once the fog rolls in, it gets darker, then your character starts getting a little bit more insane, and then things start popping up that might try to stop you from getting back to um, the town to sell off your catch. Oh, so you have to sell the fit, you have to go yep. fishing. Sell you go fish. fish, yep, you go out, you grab the fish. Is that what I'm doing now? Yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. right. Okay. Yep, correct, yep. You're moving around, you can just move the camera around, just get like a civil little tutorial sort of area here. Yeah, yeah. And then so what you're looking for is these little kind of bubbles on the surface of the water. Yeah. And then so if you go up to those things, then you can interact with that and start fishing. Oh, sick, okay. And then so one of the interesting things here is that time only moves uh, when you're either fishing or you're moving yourself. Okay. So right now you can see that time at the morning, it's seven, or 12 past seven in the morning. But as soon as you start fishing, um, so if you press square and then try to hit these sort of things here, and then so, all right, so it's been like about an hour sort of past trying to catch that oh, one fish. Okay. You can actually catch fish without having to interact with that whole like mini game at all, but it just takes longer. So it's this whole risk reward thing, because if you miss it, then it kind of sets you back down a little bit further. And then so you're just trying to catch as many fish as you can um, before night kind of um, like rolls this. around. The yeah, I can play Tetris with the fish. Yep. And then so this is a really interesting thing as well, because we've yeah. got like this whole inventory management system, which is one of the big things about this game. Okay. So as you um, continue to catch more fish, so the mini game itself, it's very straightforward. It's kind of like one of those kind of like rhythm sort of games. You just happen at the right time. Yeah. And you start adding more and more fish in. But as you keep adding fish in, you have to start filling up this little puzzle, essentially, in your own inventory. And then so there'll be other types of fish that are different shapes, different oh, sizes. Okay. You get other equipment and you have to try to figure out, all right, do I want to equip all these different rods to catch all the different fish? But if I do that, then I've got less space on my boat to actually put more fish on. So you're trying to make up this whole like management yeah. system, trying to figure out how much fish you kind of want to go out and catch. And Does do the that. parameters get smaller as you yep, like, exactly. the, as you're fishing throughout the day? Um, well, so there'll be different types of fish that there'll be like bigger sharks and oh, things will be okay. like, so things are a little bit harder to catch. And then there are different types of mini games as well. So right now you see that you've just fished out that entire fishing spot. Uh, okay. Good on you for should that I one. Should I go back or should um, I keep you going? You probably want to catch a little bit more because it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, okay. And then okay. so you can just keep moving yourself forwards and then there'll be different types of fish here. That's really good. I like uh, the Resident Evil. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was really <laughs> strange because like the programmer had never played Resident Evil before, and then so he just like, oh, I thought it was being original here. And like, no, this is actually a thing already. Yeah. No, so as you can cool. see, really this fun. is a different oh, shaped fish. So this was like an L shape. So now we've got more of this Tetris sort of thing here. That is pretty dope. Okay. Oh, I missed that one. Oh wait, how did I? I got it. Okay, let me. Yeah. 
Let me jiggle this around. <laughs> Let me rotate this piece right quick. Yeah. I think I got to oh, look uh, at that. If you're one of these sort of like OCD players that just wants to fill up and make sure everything's perfect. Oh, what? Um, what? I fished it in on accident. <laughs> All right, I got a lot, a lot of L's, you know? Yep. All right. Okay, so I place, okay, place it. Yep. How do I pick up? Let me see. Oh, I yep. can't do that, right? Yeah, you can pick up the fish and move them around if you really want to I replace can't. it. Uh, yep. So I... just go back over to one of the fish and everything as well. Yeah, and then you just, just press X on that and you can just kind of shuffle around and remove them around and shuffle things That's, the way you got one. I mean, I love this. Like, I, yeah. I am OCD, <laughs> like a bug. There's like that one little um, spot in yeah, the corner there's gonna, gonna drive you mad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I can. It's depleted, all right. Yeah, so that one's all done there as well. So I have until how long? So um, it pretty much run about like five o'clock is when the sun starts to set. And it usually gets pretty Oh, and that's where it gets crazy. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So because it's like the very start of the game, things aren't too bad so far at the start of the game. Yeah. Um, but as the game kind of ramps up and you start going, progressing more through the actual storyline, we are trying to like collect relics for this other shifty looking character. There's quite a few shifty looking characters within this game anyway. But then more and more things in the world just start to get a little more twisted. You get bigger monsters start chasing after you. And then as you explore the kind of the rest of the different world and the biome here, there'll be like much, each area has its own kind of monster. So we have five different biomes at the moment. So there is like the tropical, like um, sort of like bioluminescent coral area. We've got like the volcano area because every kind of RPG needs to have some sort of lava volcano. World. The lava world. <laughs> the lava nice world. world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so we've got a bunch of different biomes and they've all got their own sort of like giant monster or something that you need to kind of avoid. And then you have to go with the locals, maybe help them out with something and they will help you try to navigate your way around with dealing with the monster. Because we don't really give the player any way of fighting back against any of the monsters. So you kind of have to kind of outwit them or try to figure out a way of luring them into things in order to kind of avoid those problems because oh, you're I just see. a humble little fisherman. So, as you can so did, the, did your team go fishing and, and boating a lot. That's not even the thing. No, boating? Well, strangely oh, enough, um, so um, only one of us has done like a bunch of fishing before. So he's, really? um, yeah, we're in the programmers. The rest of us aren't really much fishermen or anything like that. I just remember going out one time, throwing some hand line fishing and then I caught like a squid and it just terrified the shit out you of me. You caught a squid? Yeah, it was just like on a hand line as well. Wasn't expecting it. And I was just like, what is going on? And then I haven't gone fishing since. And then so this brought back all of those sort of memories when I'm making like a whole game about like terrifying squid and stuff like that. It can like be, cre so it can be creepy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then so as you can see now it's starting at night time, so now some of the fish have now changed. So we've got fish that show up during the oh, day and then different fish during the night. Yeah. I like how the how it's yeah, the uh the mini parameters games and yeah. mini games yeah. Have yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I don't have any. So fish. now it's probably a good time to go back and sell off all the fish that you got here. Okay. So I'm gonna go back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fish. <laughs> yeah, the engine's just chilling there. Yeah, huh? yeah, it's a really but we start you off really slow. Yeah. Yeah. And actually if you press triangle, um, we can show you something if you go to the cabin. And then if you go to the encyclopedia, so speaking of fish, yeah. Um, so there is, nice. I think in this, this version, there's like 120 sick. odd different types of fish, but we've just released a couple new updates recently, which takes it up to about 150 odd, which now kind of feels yeah. weird. It's like, wait, we've got the same amount as Pokemon now? That's kind of That's, crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And then so wait, so is it in early access? Or? No, this game is now all out. It's finished. It's oh, finished. Okay, this it's game out. is available. That's awesome. And you can jump, uh, check it out. We've got some more DLC come played uh, on its way as well in the near future. What platforms? So this is available on like PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, all the Xbox Series, hey, whatever. whatever the things they got, the ones, <laughs> uh, the Nintendo Switch, uh, PC on Steam and GOG. We just tried to get it on as many things as possible. Okay, I'm buying this immediately. Yeah. Uh, what Wait, so when did you release? Uh, so we released a couple months ago, I think. So it might have been yeah. about four months ago. I think it was either March or May. I can't remember. They all kind of blurs into one and everything as it is. But yeah, it seems to have done pretty good for us. And it's been really enjoyable to work on. So we're like, ah, you know what? Because everyone seems to like it, let's do more DLC. Yeah, just for no, that's anyway. cool. Congratulations. Oh, cheers. Well, thank Congratulations. you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then so now we've got another new character here. Um, his name is Fishmonger. Not shifty at all, um, and I'm pretty sure all those um, hygiene standards are yeah, that's all grimy. good and everything. So he's a little bit of a weird character. He likes fish maybe a little bit too much as well. Um, <laughs> he ends up giving you a bunch of quests that are usually about get me this fish, get me this fish as well. Yeah. And then so obviously this is where you will end up selling all of your fish and oh, then get all the money, which then starts up the next part of the upgrade loop. So yeah, if you just hold down square, 
We can sell a poorly fish, or we can sell them one by one. It's all good as well. Got it. Why would you do that? Why would you keep some? Because sometimes you might want to hold on to a particular fish. Maybe it's for a different person. He wants to have like a uh, weird type of fish, I so you hold on to that fish instead of selling it off. Yeah. Or otherwise, yeah, there'll be different quests that you might want to be doing things with as well. Yeah, for sure. And then now you're going to get introduced into the next character in this zone, which is the shipwright. And then she is going to be the person that will allow you to pretty much upgrade your boat. So oh, right here, what we've got, see. this is a research token. And then what you use, this is essentially like a skill point, which you use to kind of like upgrade uh, different tiers of rods and everything as well. But as you can see, you're putting it into your hull right now. So you didn't, you did a good job driving around beforehand because you didn't bump into anything. But if you do hit an object, you take random damage on your boat. pieces. Yep, okay. and then so if it rolls on that particular piece, then you might lose a fish overboard. Or in this case, you might lose uh, a skill point. So you might want to spend those as quickly as possible. If you are carrying people from one island to the next, you can lose a person overboard. So you kind of want to be a oh, little really? bit careful. And then of course, when you're going out at night, there might be a monster. So you can get the person that you might be trying to carry from one island to the next, and they might just get eaten by a giant monster. Oh, this is really cool. And then so yeah, as you can see here, we've got like a bit of a, a simple upgrade tree that you can get better engines and there's pros and cons of different types of engines you can get as well. So we've got like a little small one, which is kind of handy because you get lots of, it takes up less spaces. So if you do take damage on your engine, then you're only losing one engine. But if you've got that really massive one and you lose it, you lose the entire engine and then you end up going very slowly in the rest of the world. And then so if you go up to that ship right at the top here, and then so this is the person that will end up selling you all the different types of rods that you unlock through that skill tree. And then eventually you will upgrade your boat to the different tiers of hulls of boats as well. And then that'll upgrade your boat eventually as well. And then the bigger boat means it's usually got like, it can take more damage so you can yeah. survive more hits. Can you carry more fish? You can definitely upgrade the size of your hull. You can do a whole bunch of upgrades to fit bigger rods onto your boat as well. Um, because what we do in our game is like it's basically open world as well right from the start so you can go into any of the different archipelagos and islands that you want to we do try and steer people in a certain direction but nothing's really stopping you from trying to go to the very end zone but of course the monsters might do a little bit more damage so you might want to turn around and go back the other way I want to see one of these monsters but I don't know if I'll, we'll get to it. Uh, maybe we could see if we can uh, conjure something up. Uh, so, oh no, you've actually got to like catch a weird sort of fish anyway, as it is, which might be a little bit. So if you rest a couple days, we'll see what happens. How do you do that? Uh, so there's a couple Zs uh, in the bottom there. Oh, yeah, and just rest for three days. Oh, okay. Because usually we're like, all right, a couple days, so just rest one more day, and then probably more spooky fish start might popping up a little bit. That's cool. I like the, yeah, the time effect. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. yeah. eyeball there looking at us. Yep, so the eyeball represents your current like sanity levels and everything oh. as well. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Alright. Yeah. yeah. And then so yeah the idea is that there'll be maybe some creatures out in the world that make you go insane a little bit quicker and then you start seeing more and more things that may or may not be real. And then of course yeah and then the more insane you are the more kinds of monsters and everything that might start um, being attracted to you. And then so here's a little mission where this guy's pretty much telling you, hey, I got this little package. It's not creepy at all. Can you deliver it to a guy on the next island? Oh, I see. Okay. So how do I, wait, how do I pick it up? And then you, yes. that, and then you just, yep. Wait, I, I messed that up. Uh, can I pick it up? Yeah, you've, he's already got it in there, yeah. Okay. So he's telling you, can you just drop it off quickly? Because I don't want it to rot. So your whole, your whole team is in the same area. Yeah. Developing yep, okay. yep, yep. We all work in the same office and everything as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. All in New Zealand. Yeah. And then, so now if we go out and try to catch something, uh, we'll see if maybe we can catch a little bit of a, a stranger fish for the time being. Should I go out further? Or nah, just this should right be fine. Here. This should be fine. Okay. Disturbed water. Yep. Huh? All right. There was nothing there, so uh, you can put it back and catch this one and try a different fishing spot. So when you go to a fishing spot and you find some weird stuff, or is it like randomized? How? Uh, so basically, each of the different types of fish, they all have their own sort of like aberrant version, and then so it's kind of like a Lovecraftian sort of twisted cosmic horror version of that particular fish. Uh, and got then, it. as you can see right there, you need a different type of rod, which you oh, don't quite have yet okay. as well. And then, so as you get those things, then you find out that some characters in the game, they just really want these weird sort of fish. And then there's just weird, creepy things that 
just end up happening in the world. And then the further you play through the game, the more and more creepy things seem to be spawning and coming up into the world as well. Back in the day, I used to play on the Super Nintendo, which I'm dating myself. I used to play uh, Super Black Bass. <laughs> and the cool thing about that game, you should check it out if you, yeah. if you haven't before. The cool thing about that game is like, all you see is the silhouettes up like this, yeah. and then when you jiggle your, your line and your bait, they bubble up, and that's when you know you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can grab them. All right. Okay. So, so the game's out now, and it's on everything. It's on everything, yeah. When did, when did it release? I think it was like March or May, or something around that. It began with an M, but it's just been like, we've been like post development, sort of like just trying to get everything out and everything working on the next stuff. So, but yeah. It's yeah, been thanks like, for running us through the game. No worries, yeah. Ben. Yeah, I hope you can yeah, enjoy the rest of the game because it gets like a little bit creepy. I, well, a little I'm bit definitely, I got, so I already got sucked in. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. Alex is like, yo, you need to wrap this shit <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> well, how, we, how can we find out more about your team? All right, so we're on pretty much all the major sort of like Twitter sort of things, just under like at BSG or Black Cell Games and DredgeGame.com and everything as well. But yeah, we're pretty easy to find if you just search for Dredge or Black Cell Games. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, cheers. Thank you, guys. It's been an absolute pleasure, man. I was about to do some yeah, like gas. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to do that too. You know what I mean? Don't talk about it. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Sweet. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers, man. So awesome. Cheers.